Hello there and welcome to the program. I'm Marcus Carlson. This time we're bringing you the show from the New York Forum Africa, which is underway here in the capital of Gabon, Libreville. My guest today probably qualifies as one of the more controversial participants here. Her name is Fatou Bensouda. She is the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, the International Criminal Court has been facing harsh criticism from uh, amongst other uh, African leaders. Uh, there are some people who say that uh, the ICC is targeting Africa and Africans in particular because the ICC has indicted uh, 30 people so far or roundabout, but all of them ha have been Africans. W what do you say about that criticism? We have been able to um, start with these cases because these countries referred their situations to the ICC. It is these very situations that have generated the um, indictments that we have launched against uh, the people whom we, see, we think, we see, or whom we analyze, bear the responsibility for those crimes. When Uganda was referred to us, we, in, we investigated in Uganda, and uh, we assessed in the end that Joseph Kony and four top leaders of the Lord's Resistance Army bear the greatest responsibility for those crimes. And we requested for warrants of arrest, and the court issued those warrants of arrest for, for Joseph Kony and these four people, three of them, two of them now have died. When we investigated in the Central African Republic, which is again at the request of the Central African Republic, we were able to uh, bring a case against uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba, who, as you know, is a national of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But within the context of the Central African Republic uh, situation, we were able to find, or at least this is the allegations that we've brought before the judges, that Mr. Jean-Pierre Bemba bears the greatest responsibility for the crimes that took place in 2002, 2003 in the Central African Republic. Also, the Democratic Republic of Congo requested the ICC to come to the, to, to the, to the DRC to investigate. And we have investigated. This has also generated indictments to be issued against Thomas Lubanga, uh, Matthew Ngujolo Chui, and uh, Germain Katanga. So in a sense, what I'm saying is, uh, the cases that have been referred to us, that have been requested by the countries themselves for ICC's intervention, are the cases that are generating these warrants of arrest or, or, or summonses to appear against individuals. And the individuals are Africans. They are not from another planet or another country, a continent. At a recent uh, African Union summit, though, the, the, there were some African leaders, not all of them, but, but, but some of them who were suggesting that the, the, the ICC is racist. Yes. They even went a, 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 as far as that. Uh, are you afraid to lose the confidence of African leaders? Can you continue your work if you do lose the confidence of African leaders? I, I believe, again, what is uh, being said and the information that is being given out there is far different from the reality. The, uh, the, the, the African countries who requested ICC's intervention has made us to work quite a lot in Africa. And all our investigations that are taking place in Africa, of course, are taking place in some of these countries. Mm. And we request for, for, for um, cooperation all the time. In fact, nine, almost 90% of the cooperation that we request for goes to African states. And almost all of them come back positive. So working on the ground itself, we do not have this so-called problem that ICC or Africa is against the ICC. So you're still getting so the cooperation? So we, we're still of, getting of, the cooperation. We are requesting. My teams are always in the field. We are talking to um, African authorities and they are assisting the court. This is the reality that is, that is on the ground. What about, what about Kenya though? Because Uhuru Kenyatta, he was elected president of that country yes. earlier this year. He is on your wanted list, so to speak. How actively will you be actually Will you be able to, 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 to go after him? Uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, qualify it as saying that he's on our wanted list. Because you will recall that even before um, both Mr. Kenyatta and Mr. Ruto um, stood, stood for the elections, they had already been indicted by the ICC. But they were in, indicted and it was not a, a warrant of arrest that was issued against them. It was a summons to appear. And uh, since that time, 
they have been cooperating with the court. They have been coming to, to court to um, uh, attend the court proceedings. In fact, just about three weeks ago, there was a status conference in the case of Deputy President Mr. Ruto, and he came to the ICC. That shows that, as they have said, unless we see otherwise, that they will continue to cooperate with the court. And our work um, in this situation is not going to be stopped because they got elected. The two processes are different and have to be seen as different. This was a democratic process that they went through in which they were elected. It's a political process, if you like. It's not a judicial process. ICC is a judicial body. We have our judicial work to do and we will continue to do our judicial work. Now, you've been chief prosecutor of the ICC since 2012. You're from Gambia, you're African yourself. Do you think that when you were selected, that perhaps African leaders were thinking that an African is more likely to go easy on Africa? Do, do, do you think there was that expectation there? You know, I, I unfortunately, I mean, I cannot think, think for what, talk about what African leaders were thinking. Um, I, I, I think, I don't know what their thoughts were. But um, I think I was very clear from the very beginning that, uh, yes, I am an African. I, have, I was even the endorsed candidate by African states, by the African Union, for the position of prosecutor of the ICC. But I had been very clear at the very beginning that I am a prosecutor for 122 states today. Um, just because I am African does not mean I will not do my work. You know, just because I am an African does not mean that I will go outside my legal limits or that I will go outside the Rome Statute mandate, which is my mandate. That is what I will follow. And um, if, if there were thoughts that uh, as an African I will not do my job, I think that is in fact an insult to me. Because I was elected not because I am an African, but I was elected because of my experience, because of the uh, fact that I'm qualified for the position and not because I am an African or not because I am a woman. Those are some very strong words. Indeed. Uh, I want to turn on to another issue now. We here at the New York Forum Africa, it, it's a, a, a forum that really focuses on a lot of economic issues. That's right. Uh, what are you, as the Chief Prosecutor of the ICC, doing here? First of all, I was invited by the organizers of this, uh, of this forum, which I think is a very important forum for um, us to be able to exchange views and uh, also talk about development for Africa. We talk about development, we talk about security, but all of this we have to remember is possible if there is peace. You can only do this with, when you have peace and stability and security. And the rule but of how, law. I'm coming, but how can you have all of that when you don't have justice? So justice is part of, of, of all of what is being discussed. Justice, rule of law, accountability is part of it. And I am glad that the organizers of this forum thought it fit that I, as prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, should be here when they are discussing issues of economics, when they are dis discussing issues of, of uh, uh, financial and development of the African continent. Justice is part of that development. There can be no peace without justice. Do you think that the rule of law in Africa is improving? Is, is it strengthening? You know, I, I always um, say that I, I prefer to look at the um, requests, the referral, the various requests that African states have made to the ICC for ICC to intervene. I prefer to look at that as taking leadership in international criminal justice. Um, when we talk about uh, the ICC, and talk, talk about targeting Africa, we are always thinking about those who are alleged to have committed these crimes. But again, these crimes, nobody will deny that they took place where we are investigating. Nobody will deny. Uh, nobody will deny the, 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 the hundreds of people killed, hundreds and thousands of people killed in all situations. Nobody can deny the rapes that take place. Nobody can deny the fact that there is pillaging, there is torture, there is killing that is happening in all of the situations that we are investigating. And who are those crimes directed against? The victims of those crimes. And who are the victims of those crimes? They're Africans. 
So I think that we need to rethink for a little moment about those who these crimes are perpetrated against. A lot of effort, a lot of effort is being put on trying to uh, protect the alleged perpetrators of these crimes. If a quarter or even a half of that effort is put to giving protection, giving justice to the victims, I think today the rapes that are taking place in Darfur will stop. The displaced people, hundreds of them who are in Kenya and are displaced, they would have gone back to, to, to proper and decent housing. The killings that continue to happen in the Democratic Republic of Congo will stop. I think this is where we should direct our efforts to, not trying to protect the alleged perpetrators. I just have one quick question. There's a lot of buzz around Africa and its economy in particular at the moment. Do you think that this is Africa's hour, so to speak? Is this Africa's time? It's definitely, I, I believe that strongly. You know, I think, um, I believe very much in, in Africa as a continent of the future. I think that we have the resources, we have the human capital, uh, we have the uh, people who are in a position to move this continent forward. And I am, I am happy now that a lot of focus is being lent to that. People are thinking about this continent as the future uh, for investment, as, as a continent that is really on its way going. All right, uh, Fatou Ben Souda, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for and having me. And with that, me. we're going to uh, wrap up the program. Thanks for watching France 24. Thank <laughs> you.